Hello. In this video, I'm going to create the um, this console here with uh, Substance Designer by uh, procedurally by creating height map uh, deformation. But the the actual console here, uh, a 3D model which I made uh, with CAD modeling software named SolidWorks. So, uh, because of the constraints of the height map uh, geometric creation, we will be uh, revising it a little bit to make this 3D object possible at the end. So, you can see that the general uh, geometry is just like that, but uh, since the constraints, uh, constraints of the 3D modeling, uh, height map mo modeling, we will be having difficulties on creating this vertical. Uh, actually, we will be having trouble on uh, creating the textures on this vertical surfaces because creation of this uh, vertical uh, surface is possible with a direct height map, but uh, texturing it. Uh, is not possible when it's uh, 90 degrees vertical to the projection plane. So, uh, by the projection plane, I'm uh, referring to this view, the top view. So, uh, making a rectangular height map will extrude the object just like this. But we, we won't be able to create the textures there. So, the best way to do that is create a conical extrusion instead of a direct perpendicular extrusion. So we will uh, be revising the model a little bit, but uh, I'm sure we will be having a very similar console at the end. So you can see that we have a different uh, tapered extrusion at the bottom. Uh, we will create it with a simple 3D model and we will use a simple plane on uh, as well to extrude the shape to this console at the end so i will move this part and also capture the 3d view once i will be examining the uh, 3d details of the object while i uh, i will be creating the height map so uh, this is the this 3D model will be on the capture video. So before starting, I want to show the limitations of the height extrusion uh, or height map modeling by procedurally. And you can see that our first uh, constraint on the left side of this sheet uh, shows that we can extrude directly with a tapered or vertical way. We cannot create an extension after the extrusion. So you can see that the red area here is an impossible geometry by creating this 3D extrusion by a single color displacement map or height map. Uh, so the uh, vector displacement uh, with vex vector displacement approach, is it possible because of uh, these uh, vector displacement maps consist of uh, three color and also an alpha blending with uh, a very detailed map. So they will be creating extrusions on three axes uh, with an alpha controlled way. So uh, you can create any geometry with vector displacement, but uh, the scope of this uh, video is just the simple height extrusion. So we will be avail only be able to create the geometries like that. You can see that this is the section of this 3D object. And we can just extrude the geometry just like that. We won't be able to create a secondary uh, extensions, extensions on the uh, Y or X axis. So other constraint is the thing I've been mentioning about the vertical uh, surface 
of this object uh, you remember that i uh, said that we cannot add texture to fully fully vertical surfaces that we have created with height maps you can see that we are looking to this section here on this a and b marked uh, section so we have two surfaces to talk about one is the a and other is the b since the a surface is parallel to the projection surface which is the top view uh, this surface can be textured without a loss because once we add for example a wood texture to this surface it all will uh, it will be fully projected uh, to this surface from the top view but if we create a gradient height map and create a slope uh, on the surface just like you see on this 3d outline the b surface has a six point uh, these are imaginary numbers by the way uh, the b surface will be having a 6.2 units of area when it look from the top view but since it will be extruded just like that it will be more than 6.2 units of volume or length at the end you can see that uh, the measurement here is the 9.6 but the projection distance is 6.2 so there will be uh, as you can see here there will be 36 percent detail loss when we project a texture to this b surface because uh, if we want to look uh, if we want to create a circle shape or circle texture on this surface we need to squeeze it to 6.2 units to make it look like a full circle on the extrusion so making a, so creating a area uh, which is a 9.6 units with a 6.2 units of texture means we will be stretching out the texture and we will be having detail loss at the end so we will be having these uh, we will be keeping this in mind so we will create the details on this 3d object so let's start by moving this here with a generic view and also i switch to substance designer and let's project this view to the screen as you see you will be possibly seeing at this area all right and once i will be examining the 3d object to generate different height details you will be seeing them on the screen so let's start by creating the outline of the shape because we will be start by creating the height map first and we will add the other details after the height map creation is done so let's start with a simple shape by the way this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial i want to warn you about that the following it's totally maybe difficult on creating but uh, I will try to uh, make the explanations in a detailed way to make you understand the general workflow on this kind of object creation. So first of all, let's look at the top of this object to see the uh, aspect ratio of its width and depth. So. I will be making these decisions by my eye with a trying to see the resemblance on the view. Actually, we will be having a non destructive work workflow with the Substance Designer, so we can adjust anything uh, anytime we want. So, As you see, we need to have this wooden parts a little bit tapered at the end. So we will. This means we need to have 
a transition at this edges you can see that on the texture we have a sharp uh, edges to create a 3d geometry so let's start by connecting this to height channel and see what we are having so first step is to connect the height map to the corresponding output channels so let's add a normal map first i mostly use opengl format i connected it to the normal channel the normal converter because uh, we need we will be needing our height to be converted to normal map to create better details on the at the end so next i will be adding an ambient occlusion So this makes the general detail look uh, more uh, easily recognized on creating the occlusion, of course. So let's connect the ambient occlusion to occlusion output. So we connect the normal to normal. And also we will be having the height connected to the height map channel. So you can see that we have no 3D deformation at the end because we need to change the material type to tessellation instead of parallax occlusion. And next, we will be increasing the tessellation factor. This will be uh, this creates subdiv subdivided geometry on the existing geometry. So once we increase the scale, we will be having extruded. 3d geometry at the end so i will be switching to plane high res because this surface has more polygons than the standard uh, plane and it shows the extrusion uh, in much more detailed way so also from the after switching to the tessellation from the uh, material menu once we edit it we can adjust the scale of this height or uh, displacement to get the maximum extrusion on the object. Since we are having, uh, we will be needing an extrusion from this plane up to this surface. We need to adjust the maximum white value to this top surface. So let's see the uh, resembling extrusion by adjusting the scale to let's see if 20 is better. Right, so we will be having from this surface to this surface this amount of extrusion at the end. So don't ever forget to forget your scale value because it may once you uh, close the software you will be need to adjust the height once again so let, i'm adding a describe uh, description detail to this graph by scale height scale by entering the height scale val value to make me remember each time i open this graph so i save the file and my next step will be creating the details let's see that we will be first having this extrusion here so we can create our uh, height map from now on so my approach is just adding first a levels because i need to make the extrusion uh, distance to be exact with the 3d object here so let's decrease the white level to make a proper extrusion distance here maybe it's better so next we will be needing some rounded uh, corners at the end to do that i will use a distance node but using a distance makes some uh, conical 
result at the end and you can see that we are having more radius at the bottom and uh, zero radius at the top if you are having trouble on seeing the details you can adjust your occlusion depth to see the details of the height map which is uh, ambient occlusion detail is generated from so let's make more adjustments by scaling down a little bit so since we are having this radius here we can add a levels node back here and push down all the values but not to the very bottom because it generates a crisp result once you do that so i will be having this kind of shape by pushing all the white levels to the bottom so now i can adjust the distance node to control the radius on the corners because first i'm creating uh, the profile of our shape so let's enter a 5 here because it was 10 at the start so this looks more like the general radius of the 3d model let's see you can see that we can even make it less than 5 all right now we are having this vertical extrusion here now we need to create make it conical i'm uh, putting this levels node uh, to the right side because you know it just adjusts the uh, extrusion length and i do all the detailing here first so let's use a bevel to see if it will uh, work or not for creating a conical shape because we can't extrude this vertically because uh, this way we can't add uh, any uh, texture details like we are having a wood here so for the bevel node i'm entering a negative value to make it conically extruded here and you can see that bevel makes the actual shape with a transition here this transition makes the conical or slope result on the surface so we can adjust the conical slope here by adjusting the bevel distance here so which looks better just like that but since we do that we have lost the conical result uh, the rounded result of the corners so let's adjust the distance node a little bit more to see if we can get the rounded results actually it's not happening so maybe it's better to use a blur node before without using distance node so let's connect the first shape to the bevel so we will be having the sharpest result and now i will use a blue rescue grayscale to smooth out the shape overly so once i do that now we are having these corners rounded and also we will be having all blurry extrusion at the end but i think it looks better than the distance node approach at the end so let's use another levels node to adjust the contrast of this ex extrusion to see if we can if we have if we can have a better version of extrusion All right Maybe that looks better just like that. 
So let's continue. We can have enough time to adjust anything here. We have this levels and the blue ratio grayscale to get that shape and we lowered down the white value of this final shape to make it extruded as we in a in an amount of desired way so let's use a histogram scan node actually it's histogram select will work better to mask the top white level of the previous shape so i move the position to top so uh, this node will just cache the top white value and also i will drop down the range value to mask the top surface part so masking this just like that uh, gener uh, makes us to add detail by masking this area so let me show you how to make an additional detail on the top of the surface. I will just use another bevel node by this mask first. Again, I will enter a minus value to make an indent chamfered result for this shape like this. And I will add a blend node and add this blend these two shapes by selecting the add blend node but i will drop the opacity so you can see that after the creation of this first shape we can have another conical result by blending these two because we have created a chamfer here and we used add to blend these together so I can decrease the opacity of this blending to create a secondary result here. Also, let's increase the normal intensity to see the general normals in a more sharper, sharper way to see our shape. And you can see that we are having this con extrusion first and we have a secondary chamfered conical extrusion there. Always check your height maps once you're creating this kind of uh, 3D modeling that you are having the L16 uh, value of uh, the color space. So you can control it uh, independently from the output format but uh, from the graph you can see that if I set it to absolute the 16 bits per channel looks great on high channels sometimes by adding uh, different blend nodes with different order makes you end up with L8 color space uh, at the end and you may not recognize it once it your node uh, progress drop down to 8 bits and uh, it will you will be having uh, less detailed height maps at the end by uh, connecting these to high channels so always check your height checking your height maps uh, to see if they are in l16 format will be better at the end so let's continue to create the details you can see that we have already this part uh, instead of this vertical way we have a conical extrusion and next we are having this part with by adding a secondary blending with the shape as you see there so also we can use a blur a little bit of blur actually by increasing the quality there and drop down the intensity a little bit to smooth out this conical shape but since blurring makes the extension of the boundary of the shapes as you see here so our boundary was around here we used a bevel to, to create a conical uh, edges to the as uh, scaling to the indent part but using a blur will extend our boundary so we can use 
the first unblurred clean mask that we have created with histogram select to use it as a mask on this blending. So even we, the blurring generates an extension here. This mask will limit it to blend with the actual shape. So you can see that if I delete this here. Actually, we are having a good blending here, but making it blending with the uh, mask of the shape creates a, a sharp turn here to get a better similarity with the actual object. So we can adjust it if we don't like it on the torture process. Also, we can uh, adjust the contrast of the histogram select node to make it more look like blended version at the end. You can see that it disappears when I move down the contra contrast to a lower value. Also, decrease the range. Because I just want the top level of this blending. So at the end, we will be having this result here. You can see that it can be recognized better on the corners. We are having a slope and we are having a secondary slope. So let's check if we can get this result in a better way. So one way for that, since I'm trying to make it in an improvised way, let's check the first shape that we have. I'm creating a copy here. Also, I will use an, actually we don't need that. Let's connect all the set to this copied shape. Now I will use a Bivan node. This will be another approach on getting the same shape. First I will decrease the distance to a minus value. And you see that we have a sharp result at the end. But to control it, this shape I will use a curve node to control this slope on this curve. Let's see what can we do about it. I will add point by double clicking and next just adjust it like that. And you can see that we are having already a better result at the end. Let's copy this levels node, connect here and here we will be ending up with a better result. But don't forget that we will be needing a rounded corner here. To do that, let's try to use the first approach that we made using a distance node and using another levels node to push down the smoothed result like that. But this distance, this distance is too much. So let's drop it to two or three. And let's check the result. Strange that the beveling makes it sharp. So let's see if we can use a smoothing here. Way better. So it's great that. This node has the smoothing parameter. This means the programmers design it by thinking more than us on many details. So it's looking great just like that. We can adjust any slope by changing the curve node here. Once I Adjust this like that. You can see that the general 
slope will be changed like this. So this is an easy way to control a shape like this. So also you can change the secondary angle here by controlling this top point on the curve. So this looks better in this way. Let's save it and we won't be needing this part and I'm deleting it because we have the better result with six nodes instead of the nine nodes here. And we will be have, trying to create this other extrusion here. So first, we need to be having an indent on creating this extrusion here, as you see on this part. To do that, let's use another distance node here. I will check that if I can enter a negative value for that. No. So let's use a bevel node instead of this. For that, first, we need to have this area of white levels. For that, I'm using an histogram select node and connect the uh, untouched white values, the node with untouched white values here. I'm lowering the range, increasing the contrast, and I have the mask of top part, which starts from here and here and ends from the opposite side as a mask. So I can use an, another beveling for this shape. Let's add minus 0.1. It's already too much. Let's make it 0 0.05. So now I can use another histogram select node to mask this indent part again. So also we can copy this one because we have lowered ranges and contrasts here. And you can see that we have this one. But since that you see we are having this radius here, as you see, we need to smooth out the corners of the shape. Let me check if I can do that from smoothing the bevel. Actually, it works. But since the some of the details, we, have, we got too much indent this way, we can increase the range and increase the contrast as well. But we need to see this on the 3D view because we need we may need to adjust the amount of beveling here. So let's add a blend node here. And I'm changing the blending mode as add because I will add this shape over this one. And you see that after the first chamfering which ends here, we got this distance to inside part. Let me just light a little bit to see how it looks. All right. First, by making this and by adding, let's drop down the opacity a little bit down. Because since this uh, shape is pure white, adding this to a gray value ends up with overbright result. But this overbright is, since this overbright values are clamped, I need to find the exact value of this blending by decreasing the opacity because you see that after the 0.7 the shape goes down on the height so let's make it 0.7 as a starter my next step will be adding a blur 
HQ grayscale, I mostly use this one on the general shape to make a rounded result. And also, maybe it's better to use a copy because adding this blurry transitions to existing gray values uh, doesn't helping us. We need to copy the general shape that we, are, that we have created by smoothing here. To do that, I will use this as a blending mask and make the blur, control the blurring like this. Let's see that if I can get a better smoothed result. Also let add another blur to the mask that we are using to make a nice transition at the end. Let's make it point 0.1. Dropping the contrast on the histogram select works better. This kind of transition is enough, I suppose. And from here, you can see that we need to increase the blurriness of this shape first. I'm trying to see the blurness on the general edges is enough for that. Maybe since we are having this blurness uh, and boundary extension by blurring the this shape because you see that our boundary is here but after the blurring you can see that it extends to a larger area. So let's use a levels node to use this extended area as a mask first. I drop down the, all the white values to uh, get a white mask. And my next step will be blend this shape with this one. But you can see that since we are having black values, which extends this shape, uh, this blending ends up with having an indent at the shape. To control it, we can define the compression distance by changing these sliders here. So I move up here to get a narrower mask from this transition, this shape with transition here. Also another great way to use an histogram select node because uh, you will to make a better um, clamping with levels node is not easy by uh, making with working with too many handles here. So let's remove it and use another histogram select node. So I push up the position to the top, increase the contrast. So from here, now we can control the range of this blending. So this gives us this gives us a adjustable mask at the end. This is our transition. This is our mask. So our mask still has a narrower position. Let's move the position to this point. Right, which looks better by this way. 
and also we can adjust the intensity of blurring more to get a more rounded result. You can see that we have this roundness here and here. Only thing is to adjust this seam because we actually it looks like we are having a seam there at this part, but I prefer not to have any seams yet for this blending, so which looks better just like this. Only problem here is we have wrong extension extrusion distances at the end because you see that uh, this extrusion is nearly just like this one and we ha we are already at the top part actually we are not at the top part once i make the blending opacity to the previous value which is one i get the better uh, distance management at the end so now we can control uh, we can continue creating the other details of this shape or object so one we are having this slope here on the outer boundary of the secondary extrusion you see that our secondary shape is generated by these two nodes all right let's move them to bottom and we can create this slope here by an not a gradient node. let's add a gradient linear one which generates a smooth gradient and also this is the blending which i made here so let's add a blend node and i will use a copy for overriding the values of the shape which we are having to create this extrusion so my approach on this will be using a transformation 2d node and by the way we are since we are not uh, creating an tileable texture here by double clicking to the empty area on the graph i will change the graphs tiling mode to absolute and no tiling so this way we won't be having any tiling on our creation so transforming a node doesn't end up with a tiled way since the gradient linear is already overrides the tiling mode you can man you need to manually change the tiling mode of the transformation 2d node that you are using after the gradient mode and also keep in mind that some nodes doesn't work without hmv tiling is set on the graph so if you for example let me try to remember one of them uh, actually it's stripes you can see that once your graph is in a mode of no tiling the stripes node you added doesn't work at all so you need you need to manually overwrite the tiling for the stripes node here you may encounter with different nodes that acquire or require uh, tiling mode set to hmv tiling you need to manually change after you set your graph as a no tiling mode enabled so i'm having this gradient here and i will use this as a copied gradient for this shape but to make a proper and nice blending i need to use a mask for this copy to do that i will use a levels node and just push down all the values to get a mask out of this gradient and i will connect this as a mask of this blending 
So let's connect this to here. You can see that we are having already a nice uh, angle here, but our shape is not uh, in a good way. So let's use a subtract for that to see if it will if it will be working. I will change the rotation to uh, 180 degrees. Doesn't look so good. Still, because the boundary is not set uh, properly. So let's roll back to copy this one. And also, I will change the orientation of the gradient node. And now, since we are masked for this gradient, extends the general uh, blending mask of this second stage. I will blend this tool to get a better mask for gradient blending. So I will use this as a multiply to multiply this first out of boundary shape with this one. And I will do the blending of this shape with this shape by controlling it with this blend node. Checking to see that the copy still doesn't work because we have lost these details here. Maybe we can do the blending before blurring the second stage. Maybe this part will work better for us. Let's see. I connect here and I will take the previous stage of this second stage and since I have this shape here let's see if it will be working so actually we need to have this as a mask as well which is multiplied for the mask of the gradient so you see that now we are having this nice shape and connect it to the rest of the object to see if it will work out cool now we can adjust the transformation to the node to control the uh, slope of this shape so let's make it like here move a little bit to here All right. I'm checking original model. So let's add a levels node to this part to drop down the white level of the top stage first a little bit. All right. And we are having this slope here which is not bad but I'm thinking that why aren't we using curve once again to create this shape which is straight first and get gets a slope there so let's make it this way because we only made the gradient blending here I have an idea to do that I will add a gradient linear node once again. I will multiply this shape with the mask we are having here. This way we have the boundary of the gradient and now I can use a curve node to control this transition here. But before using the curve node we have lost some of the white values which uh, which is stored here by multiplying it these are gone and we are having a gray value as a starter to correct this problem we can use an auto levels node to make the values here to snapped to the one and zero values at the end by adjusting their values automatically by auto levels so now i can use this curve node to control this shape 
I will be using this part, this node at the end, and we will be having this all angular result at the end. But adding a point here and make it straight. Now I can adjust the general slope like this, which gives us a better control at the end. I'm trying to get a better match with the existing 3D model. All right. Okay. Now we end up with a large amount of indent while we are uh, creating a subtraction here. Let me see if I can work out in a solution. Making the subtraction makes it better. So this way it looks better at the end. So on the top we are having an angular and at this area but I think I won't be bothered with that let's see what we are doing here possibly the subtraction the blurring makes it this way because we need to be having this uh, corners rounded corners here so this subtraction makes it this way but it's okay to have that. I will just move this point to adjust this part. Right. So this works better on the result. Maybe we need some angle, more angle here, right? Actually, our uh, general ratio has been a little bit of squeezed when once uh, we use this conical results for adding wood here, you know. So maybe we can adjust the first aspect ratio of the first shape. Let's increase the depth of this shape a little bit more. All right. I think it's looking better right now. And also, I want to just uh, make this gap a little bit narrower at the end. Let me see the bevel node here. Let's make it 0 0.04. And alright, that we are having this distance like the one we need to have on the shape, as you see. We are not having the perfect similar results, but it's looking good already. The only thing that bothers me is this angular distance which increases uh, to the front surface because this blurring here makes the mask 
in a worse way. So let me check to adjust this histogram select that makes the mask right. Actually, it looks better once we increase it. So maybe we can use some levels knob to push up the values of the black part. Doesn't work in a good way because this mask and this values doesn't work together at all let's see how we can change the blending by making this as add all right still it doesn't work as i want it Right. Let's switch to copy once again. I'm trying to find the better one on the history all right let's use the mask let me remove this first let's use the mask before the blending with the gradient node like this right you can see that the black values blackest values creates trouble here maybe we can just adjust this black values white like this still i'm not happy with it but I will use a blur for this mask first to make this blending in a better way so increasing these values looking right so my next step will be using Another histogram select node over this blurred mask. So this way I will be adjusting the boundary of this blending by controlling the mask. I will use a very narrow range with a higher contrast. Once I increase the blurness masking will be applied just like that making this has been removed the blurness on the corners so it doesn't work at all because once we do this mask just like this, the roundness looks better at the end. So let's remove this once more and we try to be happy 
with this result. All right. Also, the auto level we did here doesn't make me happy. So I will use a transformation 2D node to make this blending in a better way. Let's try to match these parts. All right, which looks better. And we need to adjust the curve once more because the white levels has been changed. All right. So there is another problem here about black values, I suppose. Let's roll back to the first one because we are pushing the limitations too much to get what we need. All right. We adjust those on a later stage. Still, we are having trying to have the shape of this exact part. So let's move on by creating additional shapes. You see that we have blended this one with that. So we can continue to create the additional results over this height map. So once the one we need to create is this indent part on the front panel of the object. Let's add a blend node which we will be using here and also I will use another gradient linear node and I will use a curve to create this profile here and I will copy this shape over the existing height map. So for the curve and actually before the curve I will use a transformation 2D node and I will change the tiling mode even our graph has no tiling but gradient linear overrides it. So I will make a positioning for this gradient shape first and also my next step will be using a levels node to push down all the values of this gradient node to create a mask out of it. So I will connect this to here and next we will be creating the curve to make this shape here. For that let's say just the top level first because it's a little bit of indent let me show you here as you see there's a little indent there and next we are having a straight part turns here we are having one two three additional slopes there So 
so we can move all of these to the bottom part. Maybe not so bottom, but here. All right. Now using this as copy overrides all the shape here, but we can just use a simple additional mask for using this curve on a specific way. So let's uh, delete this levels. Actually, before that, I will be creating a shape and this shape will show this outline and use this curve here as a copied blended result. So I will delete this first and my next step will be creating this shape. For that first I will try to create a shape like that. Let's use a distance to make rounded corners and next I will use a levels node right since we are having sharp result on the front part but it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter because uh, we will overwrite or pass this part on positioning the mask let's use it first now we are having the shape positioning and uh, positioning this to the current uh, blending in a correct way I will use two transformation 2D nodes one of them will be for scaling another one is position so this way it makes us to adjust these shapes better so let's see the result first I'm making scaling in the same way to prevent any to prevent any uh, proportion errors on the shape and by selecting the second transformation to the node I will use the positioning here so you can see the result just like this I can adjust the positioning here by moving the mask from keyboard. All right. Now that looks a little bit of weird at the final result so let's adjust the curve a little bit more right actually we need to have this around here because we have a straight area first and then it goes down maybe we will lost a little bit of distance from the back part but you know that we can always can adjust this area as well So let's roll back for a moment to see new uh, depth value works good or not. Actually, this part doesn't look well enough. Yes, this looks better than before. So I will adjust the slope a little bit more on the front as you see here now we have 
a better resemblance at the final stage. So I'm connecting these to the final landing here. I move this here. Let's adjust the distance a little bit less value because we have two rounded corners here. Five works better for this part. Let's make it eight then. All right. So let's adjust the curve. And also transformation here needs to be extended to the back part. A little bit more like this. For the front part, let's leave it that way for the starter. And now we will be having a high level at the top first. All right, and we have. A slope after this turn here. Let me see if I can adjust it by here. Great. All right. Now let's see that we can adjust this part. Actually, we did it already. Now having this slope here, let's add another point, make it sharp. By not making not controlled by the Bezier. Great. This is the straight part. need to be having actually it's it extends to where let's see maybe we just move it to this area all right I'm positioning the power title area here and you can see that we have lost the details on the front part but it will be easy to recover that details I'm just trying to find the perfect alignment All right and also I see that we are having a wrong curvy area here because it needs to be finished on the front surface here just like that but it needs to be connect to this area let me see if I can achieve that because the blurring we do makes that part impossible, which makes it hard to have the same result. All right now we are having troubles for this blurry part on the front. So our modeling approach doesn't look perfect so what we can do about creating this area in a sharp way let's see 
we are having this curve here after the curve we are doing a blue ring so that blue ring makes it hard on having sharp result this part so if we remove the curve let's see maybe we can do something about just removing this area let me see so we have tried simple curving using curves here but let's make another blend with minimum darken blending here and voila we are having the good results here now we can adjust the sharp chamfered walls like this now since we are having the beautiful shape back just we are we are having here now we can use a final blurness on the final image to get rid of the crisp edges if i can if i delete this you can see that we are having troubled extrusions there if i roll back you can see that we are having a better smooth results on the final shape so let's move on to the part we are creating the front panel of this shape let's see this is our curve here now after this slope now we can create front panel there. Actually, there is one more perpendicular area. Next, we are having the straight part. And after the straight part, we end up with the shape. So let's take two of these, move this around here. Now we need to adjust this mask because we don't need to uh, lo lose the details on the front because you see that we are having the sloped wooden area here but our mask just overrides that part with this gradient and removes it so i'm using a blend node add a shape node add a transformation 2d node and subtract this from the mask we are having all right now i will just adjust the position of this shape you can see that we are keeping these details by cropping this mask but our levels are looking wrong let's adjust them by adjusting these curves Let's make it a little bit indented, right. You see that our shape is forming after every process that we are doing. So possibly the hard part has been passed. Next, we will be creating the additional grids, labels and other things. So 
for the text part I used uh, Substance Painter's font uh, filters which makes us to add uh, text with predefined fonts maybe I just uh, get them export the mask of these layers to use on this shape it will be easier for us to create the final resemblance by using the uh, same text and logo shapes this logo is procedurally made within substance painter again by using the simple stripes and other kind of paintings not procedurally but uh, by masks i mean and we have a cartridge here and an eject button next we are good to go you can see that we have a text on angular surface this means we need to squeeze this text at the end so let's start with creating the shapes uh, continue to create the shapes actually all right let's continue by creating the buttons and the power button and the other buttons there first we need to create a grid here let me use stripes node for that as i mentioned before let's change the tiling mode to absolute and make it hmv tiling i will remove the shift and let's add a blend node <coughs> And subtract it now I will use a transformation 2d node to adjust the subtraction on the correct area for that first I will re overwrite the tiling mode once again and from the subtraction I will lower the opacity of subtraction to get a slightly indent area at the end so let's check what we are having so let's position the boundary first all right and i will adjust the part like this and let me see the grid amount we are having on the 3d model we have let me see 10 stripes which is just like here and this is the correct amount of the stripes at the end so let's move it a little bit to the front We want to pass the front part all right now it's good now let's change the width of this transformed grid to do that i will enter percentages here to scale down all right which looks good right now and also we can increase the width of this stripes a little bit like that maybe too much which is perfect now since you are seeing that the opacity is already low on the subtraction because we don't have 
we don't need to have as depth subtraction here i can i will use another levels node to push down the final white level level of this uh, grids or stripes to make a sensitive adjustment on the subtraction let's see what we are having again which looks all right for now right now let's go on with the power button this will be easy for us let's start with shape okay i will scale it down a little bit now adding a distance to make it roundier now using a levels node to push down the values to get a straight white mask but not all the way down i always leave a little bit of clearance while do doing that because you can see that if you do that you will end up with crisp edges on your values so making a little bit of clearance is better on creating a smoother shape because working with height map maps uh, requires smoothed results every time so we will use blurring every each time to get a smoother result because otherwise you see that we will be having this kind of crisp results to clear this kind of uh, triangular crispness you need to have a uh, much more of subdivided geometry which means uh, too many polygons or you need to smooth your height map to get a nicer transition for example uh, the thing that we have done for this front panel we use the sharp mask here as you see i will blur it a little bit to get a nice result but let's see Adding a blue ratio grayscale, I'm increasing the quality and lowering the intensity to get a transition, trans much smoother result there. So you can see that looks better instead of this part. Let's see if we can correct that part. Actually, it is caused. by the grids that we are having here let's change the width of this All right and also we need to adjust the curve that we are having here with this kind of smoothed transition so 90% of approaches, actually I'm meaning that the perpendicular results doesn't look good at the end. All right. So let's make... We doesn't help on this getting rid of this sharp part maybe we use a general blur at the end since it's looking good enough for the starting as a similarity catching the similarity here so let me recontrol the grids once again which looks good all right and Maybe we can adjust the width of this a little bit more. All right. Now we are creating the shape of this power button. 
actually we are creating the clearance around it first it looks like a square and now after creating this shape i will use a blue ratio grayscale once again to smooth the edges a little bit now the shape we need to implement here is ready actually this clearance disturbs me let's adjust it once again by adjusting the curve all right doesn't help because the auto levels here prevents us I suppose or the mask actually the problem is mask here right now I think I can adjust the font clearance there which is perfect right now let's move on to the button back all right now we are having the shape of this power button I will add two transformation to the nodes as usual one for scaling the other one is for positioning so I will add a blend node connect this shape to our final shape and I will use let's see max light and blend option for this button first I will decrease the size of the button and from the second transformation to the node I will do the placement here so first I will adjust the positioning next I can change the scaling of this shape so it looks okay for now but you can see that we have used the max lighting option we need to adjust the final level final white level of this button so I will drop down the white level just like this you see and also I will just delete this blue ring and add the blue ring here like this let me see the positioning better actually we can adjust this transformation to the node of the stripes a little bit to the top let me see which is looking more similar right now and next from the buttons position and use this kind of all right we need to scale down a little bit more by 95% Actually, I did the positioning from here, I suppose. And why did it? Oh, I need the scaling from the right, wrong part. Let's do the scaling from here. Ninety-five percent will be enough. And now you see that the button is placed to its position so we can adjust the levels node to 
make the correct height for this button like this. 